So I'm going to quickly look at baking maps from geometry in Maya to create ambient occlusion, things like that. Um, so I'm going to look at specifically masks and ambient occlusion right now. So we've got this bucket mesh which I've just borrowed off someone and it's in a lot of different parts and it has been unwrapped so the UVs look like that. So it doesn't matter if you've got everything on the same tile or whether they're spread across many UDIMs. So when we want to bake, I advise that you unwrap everything first and and then combine. So even if we don't want this whole object combined, we can just combine it for creating this map. Otherwise, we will end up with Maya, or in fact Arnold, looking at all these separate objects and baking for that, then for this mesh, then for that. So we'll end up with an entire folder filled with textures that look something like this. So here's two examples. So I did as a test, I selected all the objects and then baked an ambient inclusion. And you can see what it does is it's just looked at one piece of the object, which is only a tiny piece of uh, UV area. And then it's baked the ambient inclusion and it's sort of spilled out. And then it's done that absolutely for everything. So it's not particularly useful for, well, for at least what I want, which is just the ambient occlusion of the whole object. So let's say you, your object is UV'd and it's ready to use. You do want it in separate bits, but for the purpose of this, we just need to quickly combine. So I've combined that. I'm going to delete history, delete by type history. So we just have the bucket and I need to assign a new material. So this is just for the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to assign an ambient AI ambient occlusion. Do a quick render just to see what it's looking like. And then I could change the spread or the fall off if I fancied that. Uh, let's just take a look underneath. Where am I looking? So if we wanted shadowing on the bottom, rather than at the moment, it looks like we have self occlusion on. I could pop in a polygon plane. Let's put that in there and in the planes shape area, I'm going to turn off primary visibility. So hopefully when I render this, we will get some form of shadowing. I'm just going to pull the plane down. So yeah, if we wanted uh, ground shadowing to be included, that's something to keep in mind. So if you are baking ambient occlusion for separate objects, you might want to add in some proxy geometry from your scene or whatever you're using it for and just put it in place. So I would like the shadowing at the bottom, but it does depend where you're putting the object. If this bucket was going to be duplicated and then placed around the scene, we would probably just want more the self occlusion. So just all these objects slightly shadowing onto one another. Okay, so that looks fine. So in order to do this, so I've applied the AI ambient occlusion shader and I go to the Arnold tab and then utilities, render selection to texture. And so you pick a folder. So I'm just gonna make a new folder. And pick the resolution. So I could do 1K, so that's 1024. Camera AA samples, that's just from your render settings. And then you have the UDIMs, so I'm just gonna hit all UDIMs. We're only using up the first tile, which as I showed you before, looks something like this. So that's fine. And I hit render. A few moments later. So now that it's baked, then I will just drag it into Photoshop. By default, it is rendering a 64-bit EXR. So that's our ambient occlusion baked. I could quickly put that onto a surface shader just so you can see what it looks like. So I'm just gonna do that now. So I'm gonna create a surface shader, pop in the texture. So now this is the baked map. So it's not too bad. 
we have a slight issue there. But seeing as this is one map, that could be fixed in, you could just fix that yourself in Photoshop or Mari, whatever you're using. So that looks all good and fine. Okay, so let's say we want to mask out the separate areas of the bucket. So if we take string in Mari, so this is something that for me has come up recently, and I wanted to just mask out the separate metal areas. I was already baking an asset in in Maya, so I realized that I should just put a surface shader on different sections that I wanted and create a mask that, that way. So let's say we want to mask out just the metal bits. So I'm going to select the whole object and then control select all the wooden bits. So these are the metal bits of my object. And I'm going to right click and assign a surface shader. So this is going to be the metal. So I'm going to just call this surface shader black and select the wood and assign a new shader. So right click then surface shader, and this will be the white area for the mask. So I'll just call this surface shader white. And then what I can do is once that's assigned and then combine, the shaders will still be assigned to those faces. So this is purely just for the baking. I wouldn't recommend doing this otherwise, like because now we have two shaders on that same object, which is not a great thing to do. Uh, then we go to utilities and render selection to texture. And I will just make a new folder quickly for that. So metal underscore mask, I'll just call it that. And resolution 1024 and click on all UDIMs. Hit render. One hour later. So now that has come out, I will take a look at it in Photoshop. And we just have the pure black and white. There's a bit of in between area, these grey bits, but that is purely where a UV has ended and the colours just spilling out into empty UV space. Keep in mind the naming convention of these maps, as you can see at the very top right hand side of my Photoshop. So this was called white underscore polysurface 22 shape underscore, and then it's got the UDIM. So it's not a great naming convention, but you can just keep, uh, you can keep that in mind from where it's inher inheriting. So it's inheriting the shader name from the last shader applied and then the polygon shape, and then it has the UDIM number. So that's something to be aware of, but it is a fast way of creating and separating areas, like especially the mask bit. Otherwise, you could just bake your maps in Substance Painter, but this masking area is a really quick, effective way of doing it, and it will work across multiple UDIMs. But if you do have separate UDIMs, then you could probably just make sure that your separate objects, so if you've got one object in this first UDIM and one object in the next, then you could just make sure they're combined and then um, name them separately. So you'd have one object in the first UDIM and another object in the second one. Otherwise, you could just save your scene and combine everything. As long as they've all got separate UDIMs, then you could do it that way. So with the curvature, what we want to do is select your object, so keep it as one whole object that's been UV'd. And we will assign a surface shader. So this is just flat object. I'm going to name this curvature. And then load up for my hypershade. And In the Arnold tab, there is a curvature node. And then what I will do is I just need to have my surface shader selected. So I'm going to select this object that I've applied the surface shader to. And then I will middle mouse drop into the out color 
of the surface shader. So this is the surface shader you can see there, cool curvature. And then I've loaded the AI curvature for my hypershade. Middle mouse drag and drop. So without changing anything from that, I'm just gonna render and see what pops up. So there we go. And we could tweak a few things in there. Uh, when we render these in, so when we render them to textures, it will already have a samples area. So you might want to leave the samples to default. And then as we pick up the radius, you can see it increases that original edge thickness. So I think this object has hard edges on it. So that's why we're getting this wireframe look on this back bit. So just to see if that is the case, I'm just going to snapshot this. I need to scale this down. This is getting in my way. I'm going to select the entire object and go to mesh display, soften edge. I'm going to re-render this object. So it's certainly a bit softer now around there. But this is it's quite um, a low poly object. So that you can mess with the with a few different settings. There aren't many in here, to be honest. But but you can see as I bring up the bias here, it will strengthen the intensity of the the white edges we've got. So this could be used for your edgeware on your metal objects. So that's what I see it used a lot for in substance when people are baking edgeware, then they will have a brighter metal underneath and then, um, and then put their darker metal on top and then as a mask use a curvature map. So then it reveals the lighter metal underneath and that's, that seems to be the way that a lot of people produce the sort of uh, lighter, broken up metal on the edges. So anyway, let's bake out this curvature. So the objects combined, we've got the surface shader, which has this AI curvature in there. So the same process as doing the ambient occlusion and the, the other masks. So we go to Arnold at the top and utilities, render selection, render selection to texture. So to reiterate, keep in mind that the naming convention of the object will be inherited in here as well. So we need to pick a folder. So I've just made a curvature folder and I'm gonna click all UDIMs and probably change this to 1024 and then click render later so now that is rendered i'm just going to take a look at it in photoshop so i'm just locating the file so this is an exr 64 bit so now we can see that we have this very uh, very contrasty area so we can see the black bits are where the wood the wood panels are and then at the very edges you've got these whiter whiter lines so it creates this edge edge mask sort of looking thing as well so there we go that's the curvature